Alright, hello folks. I'm gonna do something a little different today. It's been requested quite a few times that I rank the leaders of the civilizations in this game, give my opinions and explanations on it, so I'm gonna do that. Try to do it in as much detail as possible. Um, I've got a little template thing up here, and I've got a little playlist of my favourite Civ songs going through the eras as well to keep us entertained, because why not? And yeah, let me just switch over my display. There we go. This is a Civilizations themed tier list generator. Now, it's kind of tricky to rank the leaders very specifically because they are better in different situations to each other. Oh, let me get a drink. <sighs> Recording this pretty late at night, but what the hell, it's the holidays. Okay. Um, so, for example, you might have some leaders that are really good in multiplayer. And some leaders that are really good in single player. You might have some leaders that are really good for Monarch. You might have some leaders that are really good for Deity. You might have some leaders that are really good on Pangeas. You might have some that are really good in Fractals or Isolation or Continents or Archipelago. Every leader is like different, um, so it's really hard to rank them. The way I want to do it is we're gonna go on. We're gonna set the difficulty to be DT. So we're gonna say, if I were to play any of these leaders on DD, this is how they compare to each other. And we're gonna use a fractal map as a template. I want to say fractal specifically, because that has the most options, I think. Um, you could say random script map, but I actually don't play that at all, so I have no idea what that's gonna give you. It gives you like any of the scripts. It's a bit too vague, maybe. Fractal is like, it can be a Pangea, it can be continents, can be isolation. You don't get like seven different islands with one person on each, but you know, it might be continency, it might be isolation and then everyone else on a Pangea, or it might just be all seven guys together. I think that's a pretty good template. Um, because you know, you have to prepare for anything. It might be isolated, who knows, and I like doing random fractals, so that's another reason I'm just gonna use it. Okay, so yeah, DD Fractal, Tempera Climate, nothing special. We'll say tech trading is on, in case that has something, yeah, to make philosophical, like, that that impacts, like, the philosophical trade a fair bit. Okay, so let's rank our tiers now, or let's name the tiers. So we're gonna say, like, Overpowered. Yeah, um, what the hell is going on here with the STR? Overpowered. And we'll have, these are like the most broken leaders. And then we'll have A tier as excellent leaders. We'll have B tier as good. And we'll have C tier as mediocre, maybe. D tier as bad. And F tier as terrible. So... There's some very obvious picks you can put here, like this and this. I think everyone can agree. It kind of goes something like this. And yes, I also ranked this guy just as bad. Um, I guess I'll go one by one and place them and talk about each of them. So, right, why is the music so quiet? Come on, a bit louder, please. I have a playlist of a like, couple of my favorite songs from each era to go in the background while I talk. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so, um, Hyena. Yeah, he's pretty busted. Now, for bringing him, we have to think about the DD fractal circumstances. You know, this we're not talking about Emperor. We're talking about DT, right? For example, an Emperor, you might not have time to get Axemen and stuff like that. You might not have horses, you might not have copper within your first two cities. He has an awesome unique unit that not only can rush 
the AI, but also guarantee your barb safety for the first, like, I don't know, 70 turns of the game. It can even take on spears, I mean, if they have combat one for free, it's like aggressive, and you know, two aggressive warriors in a forest hill can clap a spear, pretty good chance. So, yeah, they're pre he's pretty good. One of the most useful units for dealing with barbs. They're so cheap, they have 100% versus archery units, and barb archers are like 95% of the time what actually mess you up on DD. And the barbarian rush spears, you know, you're usually fog busting before too many spears spawn and stuff like that. So that really helps on DD specifically. He's also financial, which is just the best trait, or well rounded best trait. There are situations where philosophical might be better. But generally, financial is probably better. It's easier to utilize, it's always there. But yes, philosophical has its times to shine. Like on a Pangea map, you, and you build the Great Library, oh, philosophical is awesome. You can get some really early Corsia dates. I think I've done a few of that with. Um, I did that with Peter. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So watch the Peter game if you want to see Philosophical get used pretty well, I think. I think I did a good job there, but yeah. Financial is an excellent trait. He's also got Industrious, which is really nice, and it kind of pairs well with it. Industrious, Financial is like an early benefit trait, just helps you teching early on. Industrious helps you in the mid game when you get to Forges. also helps you build Wonders, so you can build the Great Library without Marble. You can have a shot at the mids without Stone, although I don't recommend doing that on DD. That's why I don't rate Industrious the best. Uh, but I rate it pretty, I still rate it pretty good. I think it's maybe fourth or third best trait. Well, somewhere around there. Top five, uh, definitely. Up there with spiritual expansive. Oh, we can rate the traits at the end if I remember. What else? Okay, so... Yeah, he's also got a pretty nice building. It's not an, it's not an overpowered building like his unit. It's just a nice building. It's a granary with plus two culture. That's not game breaking. It's not like getting creative for free. You're not expensive. You don't get like the granary straight away. You have to build that thing for who knows how long. You might have to grow to size four. You might have to chop two forests. You might have to whip it, you know. It's not as free culture as the entire creative trait. So I don't think it's that broken, you know. Um, you can't just settle a city without food and you know use the granary to get your food no you'll never get the granary built but i, I still think he's s tier leader he's he's just so good that unique unit and the traits very nice he's got, he's got pretty good starting techs he's got one bad tech but agriculture is good and i think as long as one of the two techs you have is good it's fine if you have mysticism but you've got like mining or agriculture you're fine mine agriculture and mining are the best two techs to start with hands down if you have one of them, you're usually okay. Both of them are used for so many useful things. Hunting is actually good if it's paired with agriculture or mining, I would also say. That's a side note, but hunting with mysticism is terrible. It really depends on the combination. So that's another thing to talk about starting text. But yeah, you want one good tech and then it doesn't matter really what the other one is. And that gets me started on our next leader, who also goes in this category, it's Pakal. Now Pakal, he doesn't have quite as much of an OP unit, but it's pretty nice for barb defense. You get them at bronze working, you only have to take hunting after bronze working, which is a lot cheaper than going hunting archery, of course. And these units can be useful in construction rushes or medieval rushes, upgrading into pikes later on if you need to. So it's not like you're building something completely useless to defend yourself from barbs. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty good. They're better spearmen. They're spearmen without copper. And they have immunity to first strikes, which is really nice. So that specifically makes them better against archers. I think it's like an extra 10% odds or something against an archer, I don't know. You, instead of 78% you might have like 85 or something against an archer in flatland open field. I don't know, you have to test that open field, but... I think Hulken is really nice. You, you get it in time for 2600 BC where the barbs attack you. And it saves you having to go archery, so it's very economical, and you know, you can two-pop whip it, you can get it with like one chop and a little bit of hammers, it's not too bad pretty easy to get 
very reliable. You always get it in time for the barbs and have time to improve your food. I mean, it's bronze working. It comes at something pretty useful. Okay, so what else? Um, who else is just as powerful as these two? I'm going to have to say Mansa Musa. Um, he's got different strengths. Oh, yeah, I didn't even talk about Pakal strengths. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not even done with Pakal yet. Pakal, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. So he's financial, of course, financial is the best trait. He's also expansive. Expansive is even better than industrious. So that's what keeps him competent with Hyanna. He's got a better trait than Hyanna. Hyanna's got a slightly better unit. Uh, both of their buildings are pretty good. I think Hyanna has the best unit in the game. Maybe, and then... Yeah, he's expensive though. Expansive is probably better than industrious, so I much prefer it. Early benefit, you get the worker out three turns faster. You know, you get the super cheap granaries. I love expansive. They just get your granaries up so quick. Just work a forest and chop it, and then it's done. Um, and then you get health later on as well. You get health the whole game, so that helps you later on when you get to factories. Helps you, you can sell away from fresh water, and it's just as if you're normal with fresh water. It's pretty good. I think he's a very, very good leader. And his building is three happiness instead of one happiness for 80 hammers. It's pretty good as well. Not overpowered, but it's pretty good. Okay, Mansa. I like Mansa a lot. And he's really good at handling tougher situations, I think. Hyena and Bacal might be better at your standard game, but Mansa's really good if things are dire. Your economy's crashed. You can build forges and get money from your forges, you know. That's nice. You're bankrupt from rushing engineering. That's okay. Your forges are going to make you free money. You... He's also spiritual. Save many turns of anarchy. You can save your ass without having to think twice by just switching into religion, begging gold, or switching into the civic that that person likes. You can say yes to every demand. Uh, any, like anarchy demand that they ask you to do. The spiritual is freaking awesome. It's like so much flexibility with it. I really rate that trait. Probably straight after philosophical. I rate spiritual just as good as expansive, which is like tied for third. You got financial, then you got philosophical, and then you got spiritual and expansive, and then you got industrious after that. That's how I rate the traits. And then the rest is like whatever. But yeah. He's, he's very forgiving for tough situations. He's also got the skirmishes. Skirmishes will keep you safe until longbows, pretty much, or trebs. The skirmish is so strong on defense. Yeah, when I played my first always war game on Immortal, I played Mansa Musa, and they just could not touch my skirmishes. It was great. Horse archers died to them. Catapults died to them. Axes and swords died to them. They have like 1% chance to kill the skirmisher on a hill fortified. It's just crazy. They're so freaking tough. They're like nearly as strong as longbows. They're uh, strength 4, but they have an extra 25% city defense and an extra half of a first strike. So, you know, it's, it's pretty strong. Much better than the bowman. Um, and yeah, he's got a really nice building, because forges is something you always build, just like granary is something you always build, and he's got 10% extra gold on the forge. I mean, that's so nice. And it goes great with his financial traits. So I, I think he's a very forgiving leader for tough situations. If you want to try Didi, or some kind of hard difficulty, you're on Monarch, you want to go Emperor, go play Mansa. He's, he's very nice. You see someone plotting, just get archery, build some skirmishes, and you're fine. Stupid Roman Praetorians won't even kill your skirmishes, man. Okay, what else? Um, I don't know if anyone else really fits into that category. I don't think anyone does. The next best leader is probably Elizabeth, but I don't think she goes up there. There's a couple reasons for that. Yes, she has the best two traits in the game, but in my opinion, she's not as amazing as those three, because her early game is really slow. She has nothing to help her in the first 50 turns, other than being financial. She has okay starting techs, uh, fishing, mining, that's pretty decent. Probably better than two of these guys actually. 
but um, I don't know. Not expensive, not imperialistic, um, no unique building or unit that come into play in the first, I don't know, 150 turns of the game. And her traits don't save any hammers at all until universities. So, with building your settlers, granaries, and workers is just painful. I guess you could say the same for Mansa, but... He can kind of defend himself, because he's got skirmishes, it's a bit better. I think his starting techs are better too. His building is better. You build, a, you build a stock exchange or a bank in like one city, that's your capital. Maybe the shrine city, so two usually. Unless the game goes really late. But forges you build in every city. So he's build and even though it's five percent less money, you build forges every city, you get them way earlier than banks, so yeah, his building's better. I don't know, she has really good traits. She's really good, yeah, I don't deny that. That's why she's an excellent tier, but she's just not overpowered, I think. There's a weakness to her side, you know. You might really struggle with the barbarians, while these three have units that can very well deal with barbarians. Like if you're going to have Barbarians in your Mansa, just go tech Archery and then you'll be fine. You build way less skirmishes than you would usually need Archers, you know. Hey, yeah, that's my opinion. I think she's the next best leader, but she doesn't fit in that category. Next up would be Gundy. Gundy's also really good. He's got one of the best unique units in the game, the Fast Worker. It remains useful the whole game. It can move into a forest and chop on the same turn, or move onto a hill and mine or road on the same turn. I think that's really, really good. Really nice, so you can move to in Cottage. It's so good. Saves so many worker turns. He's got great traits. He's philosophical spiritual. That's actually really, really, really top, top traits. One step below Mansa. But, um, again, he can have a tough early game. His mining mysticism, that's not too bad on the starting text. His building doesn't do anything. His building's not that great. It's a mausoleum, but that's a jail with plus two happiness. Uh, yeah, you don't really go for those very often. He doesn't have anything to help him save hammers in the early game. Philosophical, that doesn't do shit for the first 50 turns. Spiritual, you save a turn on bronze working, that's it. So it's not very nice combination. You compare that to someone like... Um, let's say Peter. Peter's philosophical, but he's also expansive. So he's got philosophical for the early game, uh, for the late game and mid game, and then he's got expansive for his early development. And that's such a nice combo. That's such a really nice combo, just like Pakal's. Really, really nice combo. Now his uniques aren't as good as Gandhi's, so I put them in the same tier. But you can see that's how I rate them, you know. He's got a really nice trait combo. His starting techs are pretty decent. And yeah. The unique unit comes a bit late, but cavalry are really good, and then better cavalry is even nicer. On 7 out of 10 games, I usually build cavalry, so you, you do get to use that a lot. It's a pretty good unit. I think he's a very, very good leader, and yeah, he fits into that category easily. Um, the Russian building is horrible. It comes way too late. The beakers are irrelevant because you're nearly done with the tech tree at that point, so yeah, but they have a good unit at least. What else? Um, Darius. Same kind of thing as Gandhi and Elizabeth. Except organized is not as good as spiritual or philosophical, so meh. He's got good starting techs. Pretty good unit. Pretty good building. His traits are nice, but they don't do too much in the early game. Organized is like a late game economical trait. Financial is an all-around economic trait, but there's no real hammer saving in the early game. No workers at the discounts. And, you know, only one out of three games you might have horses in your capital, or one out of five games you might you might have horses in time for the bar brush, so it's not that useful of a unit, generally. That's still a great leader. Very strong techer. You can, yeah, you can tech like crazy with that guy and get to, like, cavalry before they get rifles and stuff. You can lib steal with that guy. I should try that. And he's an absolute monster at teching in the late game. Um, who else goes in this category? Uh, this guy. I think Suleiman's a very good leader, and his trait combination is very similar to Peter's. Instead of expansive, he's imperialistic. Imperialistic is not as good. 
but he's got better starting techs. He's got a probably just as good unique unit. Muskets I also go for fairly often or get use out of them, maybe six or seven out of ten times. If I'm going cannons, I usually have muskets with them because I don't go to rifling. Or if I'm doing medieval, I'll probably get muskets. So that's most of the time. Or even if I'm going cruisers, I might build a couple muskets to defend my cities. And he's got better muskets. It's nice. He has a very nice building. It's an aqueduct that's actually worth building because it has plus two happiness. And you can just build that like everywhere. It's just so nice. Really, really nice. Similar to Pakal's ball cord. It's just such a nice building. So much... So much oomph for how much you pay. Really good building. Um, definitely, like, maybe top five buildings in the game. You get it early. You can build it early. You can skip monarchy to build that thing and get your happiness that way. That's what's nice. But he can expand and he can tech. He has a very nice trait combo. Imperialistic and then philosophical. Maybe not as nice as expansive financial, but still pretty strong. If you play it right, you can get almost as much value as Pakal. Who else is in this category? Um, Pericles is pretty good. I think I'd put him here. Let's have a look. Um, Pericles, yeah, I think per Pericles is very strong. Creative and philosophical. Well, let's see. Creative lets you build libraries very fast. Creative is a nice early game trait. It helps you, you know, claim better city spots. You don't have to settle for food, you know. You don't have to worry about border tension or, well, fighting culture for a resource if it's two tiles away from your city and their city. You always win the culture war unless uh, it goes out a really long time and, you know, they build wonders and stuff. You might be in trouble, but... Creative is just so nice for early game, grabbing land. It's really strong in Pangeas. Get your first library up faster. Start running the scientists earlier. A little bit of economical support in that regard. And then he's philosophical. He can pump out the great scientists like crazy. He is one of... Pericles is one of the best leaders to do like elephant or construction rushes with. Because not only that, he's got a nice unique building that comes at construction. And he gets it for half price because he's creative. There's so much synergy. It's really... It feels really good to play him and do like a construction attack. He's like one of the best construction rushes. Yeah. He can bulb math. And then, you know, just hard tech construction. Get his building. Whip his building. Two happiness, three culture, every city. And then whip more units because of that. It's so nice. And philosophical, yeah, I mean, you can also get an academy, probably, if you get your libraries out early enough. You can get an academy and bold math. Get really early catapults, a 1000 BC if you do it right. And you can bold philosophy later and keep up in the tech. Really nice. Very good leader, I think. Um, okay, who else am I putting up here? I think Mahmud is pretty good as well. Yeah, it's very similar to Suleiman. I think he's just as good as Suleiman. He's expansive, which is better than imperialistic. It's just better. But he's organized, which is not as good as philosophical. But organized is nice, and he's got a very nice combo. Expansive lets you expand quick. Organized lets you pay for your shit. That you, you know, if you settle 10 cities, organized is awesome. You just two pop whip, quarter hour seven every city. You get the you get the granaries for like one chop or one pop whip, and then you get the two pop whip on the quarter houses, and bam, you're just paying for your cities so quickly. You can keep expanding, expanding, expanding like crazy with this guy. Very fast city development. It cuts the maintenance down and also, civic upkeep scales off the amount of cities you have, if you didn't know that. So, organized is really strong if you have a large empire. Also, cheap lighthouses, cheap granaries. That's such a nice combo, land. Holy crap. Uh, cheap courthouses, just cheap everything. So much discounts, cheap workers. You can just expand like a complete monster and pay for it. And for that reason, I think he's really good. Good starting techs, good unit, good building, of course, just like Suleiman. Yeah, very, very good leader. 
maybe a bit harder to utilize, but just expand like a bastard and get Code of Laws early and you're fine. Alright, um, who else? I think the Egyptian leaders deserve to be in this too. I think they're very, very strong. Um, both of them are very similar. I think creative and industrious are roughly the same tier of traits. And then they're also spiritual. Spiritual's really good as well. They have great starting text just like the Ottomans. Their traits are nice. Very nice synergy with spiritual industrious. Very nice synergy with spiritual creative. Um, you know, creative, early benefits, cheap library, spiritual, you know, the civic switches, the temples and stuff. It's a big deal. I think they're both very nice. Industrious. Well, both traits save you hammers, and then spiritual just saves you turns. So I think that's one way to look at it. But both of the traits save you hammers. It'll help you a little bit economically, and then yeah, spiritual just save you time. Allow you to do those civic switches and get the max out of your stuff. I have a really good time when I play both Egyptian leaders. Gotta say, they're great. And don't forget about War Chariot. It's better than Persia's Immortal. It just scales better with the extra base strength. Um, but yeah, they're very, very good. You can rush with War Chariots. I should do that sometime on Didi. Who else goes in this category? Yeah, Victoria. She's not bad. Financial Imperialistic. You can expand like a bastard with this leader. Yeah, what can you say? The Uniques aren't really that impressive in England. They come a bit late. They're not that impressive when you get them. Just a small boost, but... Decent starting text. And yeah, she's has an easier early game than Elizabeth, because Imperialistic can get the Settlers out quickly, save Hammers. But Philosophical's obviously a much better trait, so... I would say Elizabeth is still a better leader, but... She still deserves that category, I think. Okay, next up we have B tier, unless there's anyone else I missed. Willem. Willem is a very easy leader to play, you know, you get the free border pops, you just get the free commerce, everything just just so free for you. It's, it's nice and easy to utilize the bonuses, you get the cheap libraries, and yeah. Very strong economically, fast libraries, f you know, faster improvement to your already improved commerce. Very nice leaders, very nice leader. His uniques come a bit late, and they're very situational, but on DD Fractal, I'll probably get use out of the dike, maybe 8 out of 10 games I would say. Because I tend to go to the tank era quite a lot on Didi. Yeah, I got to finish the Genghis game before tanks. Sorry for the spoilers, but yeah. I actually did a... I don't know, other than the Genghis game, most of my recent Didi games have been really tough and grindy. Painful. And yeah, I always end up with someone getting multiple vassals and becoming a monster. Not very nice, I can't get a good 1300 win date. Even if I get Quirises at 600 AD, it still drags on. It feels bad. But, um, anyway. Yeah, you get a lot of use out of that building, I think, on Deity difficulty. Quite often goes the late game. His unit is bad on a Pangea, but on a Fractal map, more often than not, you probably have to invade overseas, and you might do it with Galleons. You might not. You might not invade overseas. You might take your continent and go for Diplo. So maybe 5 out of 10, I would say, it's useful on a Fractal. I think it's pretty good. It's a ship that can carry four, and it has six strength, so it's better. It can kill other galleons, and it carries more units, so you don't need as many of them to transport your army, so it saves you some hammers. Very nice. It's got good starting techs, good traits for the early game too, so very nice leader. Okay, who else? I think that's it for our excellent tier. We're now onto the good leaders. Um, I think both Romans, first of all, just for mainly for their Praetorians. What the hell? Okay. 
Um, their trades are pretty even, organized or industrious, I think. Yeah, and then they're both imperialistic. It's kind of a nice combination, but not great. Expensive is obviously better, and then you might want philosophical or financial instead of the other two. But I mean, yeah, industrious, imperialistic, you can expand fast. With imperialistic, then you can, you know, build the wonders for fail good, you get the forges up quickly. It's an it's more of a mid-game economical trait, industrious, very strong in the mid-game, not that great in the late game, not that great in the early game, very good in the mid-game, and then imperialistic is very good in the early game, and has a little bit of use in the late game when you go to war lots and go for conquest or whatever, get your great generals, but yeah. They're organized similarly, good in the mid and late game, but weak in the early game. Imperialistic, good in the early game, weak in the later on. So Nice combination, both of them are pretty good, and then let's not forget they have the Praetorian. Now, I don't think the Praetorian is that impressive on Didi. It's like having war elephants, yes, it's pretty strong, it's very, very strong, but you can't really rush alone with them. You dow your neighbor with six Praetorians on Didi, they're gonna have walls and three axes there waiting for you, and they're just gonna smack you. That's not gonna work, usually, on Didi, I'm sorry. They also get ironworking well before you because they tech like bastards, or you have to skip agriculture if you want ironworking that early. So, yeah, it, it's tough. I don't think they're that amazing on Deity. The way you want to use them on Deity is with a construction rush. You build catapults, you bombard the city defenses, you probably don't even need to suicide the catapults, you just throw the Praetorians in and they'll clap cheeks for you. So, that's pretty nice. Yeah, maybe I'll play Caesar on Didi. I don't think I've done either of the Caesars on Didi before, so that could be fun. Do it on a Pangea too and do some fun times. Yeah, I might do that next, or sometime soon. Use it in a construction rush. I think that's the most effective way to use them on high level. Nothing can really stop you. They'll shred right through longbows. You might have to suicide a catapult or two, but... Yeah, Praetorians will cut right through longbows. You get City Raider promotions. They're so cheap as well. 40 hammers for 8 shrimp is such a bargain. Um, okay. What else? There's a few good leaders you can put in this category. Um, Seri Avaman. Expansive creative. Decent starting ticks. Decent building. Not such a great unit, but... Yeah, it's pretty good. Great traits. Very, very strong in the early game. Grab land, expand quickly, get the granaries and workers out quickly. Very, very nice. Fun to play and expand with. You'll have a great time. If you want to bully the lower difficulties, like for me on Immortal Series, my go-to guy. Just become a monster and run everyone over. That's what I did in my two-hour challenge for Immortal. I just played Suri and kicked ass. Um... He's not as good on Didi, but I still think he's a pretty good leader, so yeah. definitely a well-rounded, respectable leader to play. A lot of fun, too. I've played him a lot of times, actually. So you can put quite a lot of leaders in here. I'm going to put Isabella in here. She has horrible starting text, and that's what's stopping her from being in S tier. If she had better text, she could be S tier, honestly. It's just that starting tech combo is so horrible. Fishing, mysticism, blech. When you're inland with like a pig and a bunch of forest, you're screwed. But if you can make the start work somehow, she's awesome. Experiencive and spiritual, that's two really good traits. And oh, her uniques are very, very fun. Akurusia is, is the best unit for Didi. Akurusia is uh, my go to unit for Didi. I'm, I've gotten very good at doing Akurusia rushes, I might say. I say proudly. I think my Crucy dates recently have been have improved. I used to think 1000 AD Crucies are good, but I'm getting them at like 600 AD or f living military tradition at like 450 AD or something nowadays. Quite often, I think that's pretty good. A very good. It's good enough for Didi. And guess what? She's got better Crucies, much better Crucies. Yeah, this, the easiest way to take out a Didi AI is just Crucy rush them. Honestly, it's so strong. You just got to get enough of them out quick enough and get the tech, obviously. But if you get them like 500 AD, then you build them for like 10 turns, you won't run into rifles. It's it's very safe. They don't get rifling before 1000 AD. 
like 9 out of 10 times, 99 out of 100 times maybe. Anyway, yeah, her cruisers are even better. They can defend, so you don't really need to do anything funky like build muskets or whatever. They also have a huge bonus against melee units. And you know, honestly, the, when you're attacking a city, other than muskets, the two hardest things to, that kill you in cities is not really the longbows, it's actually the maces and the pikes. Obviously the pikes is pretty self-explanatory with their 100% versus mountain units, but I actually, when it's a flatland city, I die to maces more th than longbows. I think the maces scale better. You have a longbow with like city garrison too. Fortified, so that's what, 75%, maybe 40% culture. What's that? That's like 115%. That makes the longbow like a strength 13. If you have a 14.4 two-star cruiser, you'll have like 70% odds against that. Now, if it's a maceman, they're strength 8, but they have combat 2 or something. And they, what do they get? They get the 40% defense, 25% fortified, so that's 65% onto 8. That puts them about 13. But they're combat 2, actually. So you add an extra 1.6. And that actually puts them up to, like, 14.8. And that's stronger than the longbow with City Garrison 2. Go check my math. I'm pretty sure, anyway. I might have messed that up. But I'm pretty sure Maceman is, is stronger than longbow. On a hill, I think the longbows might still be stronger, but, you know, more often than not, you get flatland cities. But anyway, the Conquistador eliminates that weakness. It takes 4 strength off of the maces and 3 strength off of the pikemen, because that's how the bonuses work. Um, and yeah, instead of fighting 15 strength pikemen, the pikemen are only strength 12. Instead of 14 strength macemen, you have the, pike, the macemen are strength 10. You just crush them. It's so freaking strong. And yeah, when you attack in that era, you'll usually find they build like two longbows, two maces, and a pike in each city or whatever. It's something like that. Or two longbows, a crossbow, and a mace or something like that. Or two longbows, two pikes, and a crossbow. Two longbows, two knights, and a mace. It's something like that. Like four or five or six units. But yeah, very, very strong. Now, she has really nice building too. Oh. So if you don't want to go cruisers, you can go trebuchets and get City Radar 3 trebs, which can almost take on rifles. Can take on rifles if you have enough of them. Or you can get City Radar 3 cannons if you skip economics, which is pretty darn awesome. City Radar 3 cannons, yeah, nothing stops those. Um, you can actually do treb and rifle, by the way. It's not impossible. I want to try that sometime. Could do it with Isabella, maybe. Treb and rifle versus rifle. You just suicide a couple trebs in, and take out the defenses, and then your rifles can just clean up. And that's a resourceless kind of strat, so you're not using any resource. Maybe I'll do that on a game, you know, a no no resource no strategic resource game could be fun. <laughs> but um yeah, you can do that. City Raider 3 trebs are really strong. The reason City Raider 3 trebs are really strong, or City Raider 3 in general. Um, is because you get an you, you get the seventy five percent city attack and then you get an extra ten percent against gunpowder units, which screws over muskets and rifles particularly when it wouldn't screw up a longbow. So pretty nice. Okay, enough blibber blabber. Who else goes into this category? So it's pretty simple. I think all of the American leaders belong in this category. We got one. Where's Lincoln? There. And Washington. They all have decent traits. Lincoln's probably the best, actually. Philosophical charis- because he's philosophical. He's expansive, which is like one step below philosophical. So very good trait as well. So, and he's organized industrious. Organized is a bit better than charismatic industrious, not as good as the other two. Roughly even traits. Nice combos. Organized industrious. Um, well, that can be a little hard to play, but I think that's a very powerful combo too. Cheap forges, cheap courthouses, you can expand like a bastard with that. And develop your cities very quickly as well, and pay for them with organized. Um, philosophical, charismatic. Um, well, charismatic gives you early happiness in philosophical, and increases your happy cap in philosophical. You know, you run the great people with those extra happiness, it's kind of nice. 
Expansive Charismatic. Charismatic just kind of goes nice with anything, really. But yeah, uh, I don't know what's to be said. They're just nice traits. I haven't really played them much, the American leaders. Similarly, the French leaders are also very good in the same category. Also, this. Okay, well, hold on. The starting techs are okay. They're fishing agriculture. That's not bad. Agriculture is good. Fishing is a bit debatable. But yeah, I think that's not too bad. The uniques are not that impressive. It's kind of a bit sad, but yeah. Come too late to be useful. Alright, so French leaders. The French leaders, they have great starting texts, they have pretty decent traits all round. Nothing amazing in the traits, maybe a little bit better than the American leaders. Still in this category though, they don't quite make the same category as like Ottoman leaders. Ottoman leaders are better than both, I would say. Um, the uniques are similar to the Americans, not that impressive, but they're a bit better. You get better muskets, which is obviously better than a marine. And then two movement muskets, nice, but not amazing. And then you have yeah, an observatory with a free artist. It's very situational. It's good with rep, but that's about it. Or culture, but yeah. And then, yeah, the trait combos, industrious, charismatic. Yeah, it's the same as like philosophical charismatic or expansive charismatic, pretty much. Organized charismatic, yeah, same kind of thing. And then the Creative Industrious is probably the best out of the ones here, but yeah. Okay, um, who else goes in this category? I think the German leaders, actually. Both of the German leaders are very nice. So we have... Whoa, 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 whoa. We have... No, not Boudicca, what the hell, I meant to put Bismarck. We have Expansive Industrious, which is a pretty strong combo. We have Organized Philosophical, which is also pretty good. The Uniques are not very impressive, just like the Americans. The starting techs are, are pretty decent. Hunting, Mining, I do like that combo. So yeah, that's all I can really say. Philosophical, Organized, that can be hard to use. They come later on. So that's why he's not like excellent or overpowered, but they're very strong economically. And he can be a monster in the late game, Frederick. Bismarck is a lot more early and mid game friendly. I should play him, I actually do like that combo a lot. Expansive Industrious, cheap granaries, cheap forges, very nice. Fast city development. And you can build wonders with that, so that's, that's pretty nice. But yeah, the uniques. The Uniques? Oh, Germany has one of the most useless Uniques. The Panzer. I wish it was just a 32 strength tank or something. It's a tank with a 50% bonus against other tanks, but that doesn't really help you. You can just promote to the... Uh, promote to the promotion that gives you bonus versus armored units. When you're attacking cities, you have city radar, and tanks are not the problem when you're attacking a city. It's the anti-tanks and the marines that might get you. And the Panzer doesn't do anything extra against those. So, kind of useless. Wish it was just 32 strength, it would be so much better. <sighs> okay. A couple other leaders you can add. Maybe Asoka. Um, yeah, got the Fast Worker. Spiritual and organized. Just not as good as spiritual philosophical, and that's all. And can be awkward in the start. Very awkward in the start, so... Not as good as philosophical. Um, that's all I can really say about that. Some other good leaders. You could put like Catherine here. She has nice starting text, nice early game traits, just not so powerful long term economy, economic traits, and pretty good unit, not a great building. Um, Joao, similar to Catherine. Okay, so Joao is like, his uniques kind of suck. I don't like either of them. Um, you don't want to... You, the, the extra cargo space on the Karak, it doesn't help because you need astronomy to settle overseas. Otherwise, your city will have no trade route connection and no resources, so it kind of sucks. You need astronomy for overseas settling to get the trade routes. So the unit doesn't really do much. 
um, expensive imperialistic very strong early game expansion and you just prioritize commerce and you make sure your economy is okay and you can expand like a bastard with that and yeah expensive is a good trade you get the cities online you get the workers you can start improving the cities faster so that's really nice start growing and all that very very nice and I think he's fishing mining starting Texas not too bad at either um who else I would put Shaka up here. I think Shaka is actually a pretty good leader. Shaka, okay, so he's got the aggressive Akunda, and Akunda's really nice. I think it's a great building. Get that so cheap, and it's just a little bit of early maintenance reduction, and it adds up later on in the game. It really does. It's it makes a lot more sense than Charlie's building. It does the same kind of thing, you know, on top of a courthouse. You just get them so early; they're so cheap. You can go to war and then take a bunch of cities and then the Akanda will kind of mitigate the maintenance you pay. Really nice. Good starting techs. The units kind of meh. Can be good. Good in an early attack, but not that impressive. Maybe goes with a horse archer rush to pick off other chariots and stuff maybe, but not that impressive. And what else? He's expansive, so he's pretty good. That's all I can say. Aggressive is not bad either, and it's good for his building, so nice, nice leader to play. Even though he may be a bastard when the AI play him. Um, Zara, also in this category. Not much to really say. His uniques aren't that impressive at all. The unique unit, yeah, I'd rather the Ottoman unique unit. Or the French one. It's just a musket with a bunch of first strikes, which can be good on defense with city garrison three and then promote them to drill after that you can really tough muskets but yeah, I'd rather janissaries they're just all round better uh hunting mining starting texas not bad creative not bad organized not bad not amazing though so it fits that category pretty easily all right And the rest of these leaders aren't so great, really. Let's see. I don't really like the Chinese leaders too much because... Yes, they have the best starting techs in the game, but really you only need one of them and if you don't have any agricultural resources or you don't need to go mining Brunswick too early then it's not actually the best combo depends on the situation like what if you roll a fishing start they're not that great it's not any better than like hunting mining so it's it's great but it's the most useful generally but not always and they're protective both Chinese leaders are protective and that's like playing with one trait Protective is just the worst trade in the game and it really drags these leaders down. The unique unit isn't that great on DD. The unique building, I don't know, what's the point of that? It's a theater with 25% culture, like, okay. Kind of like Zara's building, okay, whatever. Um, but they, they're playing with one trait, that's the problem. Protective just does nothing most of the time. So, yeah. Um, aggressive is much better than protective you get you can actually fight barbarian archers with it so that's why shakas are probably a tier above them it's got a better building too you can use aggressive you know combat warriors or cover warriors and fight the barb archers off without having to take archery it can be really good in some situations but yeah they're not that impressive the chinese leaders honestly churchill's playing with one trait yeah i put him actually pretty far down it's just not good. Charismatic is okay, but when it's by itself, it's really not that great. And protective, yeah, one trait. And your only trait is charismatic. Oof. Who else? Oh, Justinian actually goes up here. He's actually really good. Not amazing, but he's pretty good. Spiritual and imperialistic. Imperialistic helps you early on. Spiritual helps you later on. More than not, more often than not. Got a pretty strong, unique unit for medieval fun times. It's really fun to play on Immortal. 
The building's actually really nice too. It's a theater with a bunch of extra happiness. Plus one base happiness and then an extra happiness pair 5% culture instead of 10%. That's really nice. And a horse instead of die and you get horse more often than die. So that's nice too. I think he's very good. Oh, he's, he's good. Um, okay. So who else? Churchill, yeah, goes down now. Sumeria. I do like Sumeria. I just hate the protective part of him. And creative is kind of an okay trait. You could put Sumeria up here. He's got good starting takes. He's got a good unit. He's got a good building. Just protective sucks so he only has one trait. Say the same for Wang. Financial's nice, but he's protective. That sucks. Um... I think he's mining mysticism. That's not terrible, but yeah. Ragnar also in that category. He's financial, yes. He's aggressive, yes. That's better than protective, but his starting tanks suck. Fishing, hunting, ugh. If you're inland, that's just a useless combo completely. Um, he's good on water maps. That's nice. Not game breaking, but it's nice. The extra movement. Uh, Berserk is actually pretty nice too. I, I think I had a lot of fun with him on Immortal. He can be good. Aggressive Berserk is 20% stronger maceman than usual for attacking cities. It's pretty nice. Good synergy there. Okay. Bad leaders. Mediocre leaders. I put Sitting Bull here because his unit is pretty good against the Barbarians. He's not good for attacking with, but he's philosophical, which gives him some saving grace. And he's he's got a resourceless axeman that's a little bit weaker, but force strength is still enough to take out barb archers. Um, yeah, he's pretty good. I mean, he's okay. I mean, he's not good, but he's okay. He can he can deal with the barbarians. It's okay, starting text, agriculture, fishing. You know the. <laughs> the building doesn't really do much except for the AI gives them city garrison three archers. Yeah, cool. But not much for not much use for the player. But he's philosophical. Saving grace, not great because he's protective. But yeah, he, he's okay. Kind of like Wang and stuff. Cyrus probably put Cyrus here. I don't think Cyrus compares anywhere near to Darius. The Persian Empire is okay, good unit, good building, good text, but charismatic imperialistic is eh, nowhere near as good as financial organized. Uh, Monty. I like his building, I like his traits, I hate his unit, and I hate his starting text. You could maybe put him here. I think the Sacrificial Altar is really good though. One of the best buildings in the game. That's his saving grace really. Because hunting and mysticism is freaking awful. I hate that combo so much. But he's got a really fun building. It's a cheaper courthouse. And it reduces whip anger by 50%. And it works on whips that you've already done before you built it too. So it's so nice. Spiritual's great. And aggressive does help you early on, so yeah, it's not too bad. Not bad, really. Good traits, it's just, yeah, bad starting techs. And the unit is not that impressive. A weaker swordsman, but it's resourceless. Um, Saladin. I don't know, man. He's, uh, he's protective and spiritual. He's got pretty awkward starting techs. Will and mysticism. Blech really awkward to start with you don't really want the wheel first I mean it's okay with agriculture because you have agriculture already but wheel and mysticism is just awkward you usually want bronze working and either fishing agriculture or something like that first yeah very awkward it's like Justinian but Justinian's got a lot of nice perks and better traits Imperialistic instead of protective, it's kind of a big deal. Um, so yeah. What else? Alexander can probably go here, and his real saving grace is being philosophical and having an okay building, kind of comparable to Sitting Bull. 
Mongolia, I don't think they're very good. Aggressive imperialistic, and that's like second and third worst traits. Um, not as bad as protective, but pretty bad. I did beat Didi with him finally, but yeah, he's not that good of a leader. <laughs> good for going to war, but not much else. Uh, Stalin, oh, he's got okay starting text. He's got a good unit, obviously, and his traits are okay-ish, so yeah, but he's pretty mediocre. Kubla. Kubla's a lot better than Jenga, so I still wouldn't rate him that highly, though. He's pretty strong when the AI plays him, that's for sure. And Marabi also in that tier. Um, Kashyyyk is nice and not game-breaking. Same with the Jar, it's nice but not game-breaking. Hammurabi has nice techs. His traits are kind of meh. His unit is meh. His building is a bit meh. So, pretty much spells out mediocre for you. What else? Brennus? Bit better in the traits, maybe. I can put him up here. A lot better than Boudicca. Uh, Celts, I don't like their building at all. I don't like the unit at all. Um, I hate the starting text. It's the same crap that Charlie and Monty start with. Ugh. And this is Hannibal, I guess. Because I haven't seen Hannibal yet. Hannibal's really good. I put him up here. Charismatic Financial is a really nice combination. Grow your capital higher, work those cottages early. Uh, really, really strong economically. His uniques are nice, but... Uh, the Numidian Cavalry is kind of awkward to use sometimes. Pretty awkward to use, to be honest. If you're fighting archers, it's worse. If you're fighting melee units, it can be better. It can be better in a construction rush too, more... Yeah, it can just be better. Um... But yeah, Financial Charismatic, very nice combination, I think. That the Charismatic goes really nice with that, that's all I can really say. Do like Hannibal. His building is pretty good, it's a harbour with an extra trade route, makes the harbours actually worth building in your water cities, so... Yeah. And that's your ranking, pretty much. It always looks differently every time I do this. But I think um, it, it's generally something like this, how I rank them. And again, everyone has their own opinions. You're going to say, but I think this lead is better because I did this and this and this. Yes, it's kind of like that. A bit biased. Now, if we want to rank the traits, I would say you have... Financial Philosophical at the top. Financial being a tiny bit better. You then have expansive, what the freaking hell, and spiritual, and maybe industrious. But I would say industrious goes in the next category. Here you will have crea creative, and industrious, and I don't know what else. I come back to that. This is where you put um, imperialistic, org. Charismatic. I think that's it. Oh, and then aggressive and protective. Ag. Actually, you know what? I think Ag actually goes in this tier. It's really not that bad, especially on Didi. The fact you can skip archery and just go warriors also helps you in your wars quite often. Oh, I think it's something like this, really. Maybe organized can go in that tier. Kind of hard to say where Organized goes. Yeah, maybe Org is a bit better. So if you're rendering on traits, that's probably how I'd rank it. Did I forget any? Uh, I think that's all of them. But yeah, that should probably sum up things. I guess I can rank the AIs real quickly. So let's say the AI were to play these leaders. Reset it real quick. Here we go. 
Let's rank the AI. So if these AI were to show up in the game, who is going to win? Once again, Hyena is one of the most powerful AI. And so is... Where is he? This little bastard, if you don't stop him. These guys are easy to attack, but they can get ahead of you very quickly and become real dangerous. They make a lot of friends. Mansimus is also pretty tough to deal with because he's a pain in the butt to actually attack early on because he's got his skirmishes. Where is stupid Mensa? And we got the same three leaders at the top. Uh, how about that? I think they're very, very strong as the AI and they can become real runaways. Um, who else? And then you got the leaders, the, the dangerous ones that like plot it pleased, but also can tech and make friends. And there's quite a lot of those kind of guys. They can be very dangerous. Or the ones that like the semi aggressive ones that have friends and stuff. So you got, I'd put like Kubla here, Sumeria here, Suri here. It's mainly their diplomacy kind of thing if they're not amazing techers. Um. After seeing Hannibal's 1400 BC elephant Dow on me, I'm gonna have to put Hannibal, the sweepy broom, in the most dangerous tier. The bastard construction rushed me at 1400 BC with elephants. So what the friggin' hell am I supposed to do against that? That's, that's friggin' scary. He goes up the top there. He's one of the most dangerous AI. Holy crap. Um, I think Zara can be dangerous. Can be bribed. Likes to dogpile, but peaceful otherwise. The tech's pretty okay. The Roman, I think, yeah. Julius. I don't, yeah, Julius is fairly dangerous. He, he's actually a warmonger, so maybe not that strong. Though, he's, he's a bit too aggressive. Augustus is not aggressive enough. The, like, moderately aggressive ones up here, they're pretty powerful, in my opinion. Um, so I like Justinian. Justinian can be a real tough prick. Ah, Justinian's always... A very successful AI. I might put him even up here. He makes re strong religious alliances. He's good at spreading his religion. He expands fast and he beelines military texts as well as religious stuff. Although he did go on strike when I watched him play on Immortal, so who knows. I might have to do another AI survivor sometime kind of thing and talk about the AI. Could be fun. Put my... Put these bastards in. I think Mamed and Suleiman are also very powerful as AI. Their personalities, you know, they have moderately low peace weight. Mamad's a bit more bastardy. Suleiman would be not so harmful. That bastard freaking downed me early as well. Now they're both bastards. Pretty dangerous. They're good techers, they expand well, and yeah. Um, anyone else in this category? Like Selt, not that impressive. Hey, Gandhi, maybe. Gandhi... I don't know. He's too easy of a target. That's his problem. He can tech really well, but he's too easy of a target. Everyone will just attack him. He's always... Yeah, he's at the highest peace weight in the game. Because he can tech well, maybe he'll be okay. He's a bit of a pushover, so I don't know. It's kind of hard to raid him. If, he, if he's left alone, he's like up here. But if he gets attacked, he's like, yeah, so, I don't know. Hard to rate these guys. I think Cyrus is well-rounded, pretty good. Same with Darius. Darius tech's better, but Cyrus can be aggressive and... make. He's, he's got a lower peace weight, so he's better diplomatically. Peter, I don't know about Peter. He's not that impressive as the AI. Um... Louis actually pretty strong. I've seen him do some crazy stuff. Willem is a prick. Yeah, he's a real prick. And then you have... I think the next most dangerous ones are actually the Warmongers. They'll ruin your game. And also ruin their own game. And then you've got the kind of category where people sit in the corner and do nothing, like hatchet. Oh, actually, she's not the worst. 
Uh, let me put the Warmongers up here. Okay, hold on. No, no. Well, let's do the worst ones. I just thought of Tokugo. Tokugo is just terrible. He's just he's just terrible as an AI. He never accomplishes anything. Same with Sitting Bull. Those two are like the bottom. They're just, they're just so hopeless. Um, Tokugo. Okay, well, if we're going to rank it like that, then... Yeah, the Warmongers... Not that impressive. Not likely to win the game, really. They'll... They can become a monster, but it's unlikely. It's just hard. It's hard to rate these guys. I think Catherine's okay. Napoleon, too aggressive. I guess I'll put the warmongers here. They're terrible, but they'll ruin your game before they ruin themselves. Is pretty much the idea. Shaka, he's terrible. Julius. Celtic leaders. <laughs> Genghis. Jarrell's not terrible. There's science AI goes up there. Saladin, not terrible either. Charlie, not terrible. As an AI. Ragnar here. Chinese leaders really aren't that impressive, honestly, so I'd put them in here. They just don't really do much as when the AI plays them. And then we got these guys, the Techers. Elizabeth is a bit like Gandhi, honestly. Had she... She can tech pretty good. Can be aggressive, but I don't know. She's a bit of a pushover too. Maybe here... Ramsey's kind of there as well. Uh, Victoria, for some reason, she sucks as an AI. I don't know, man. Like, most of the time, I just see her in a corner with five cities trying to tech, and she just doesn't really do much. I, I, she's like, ugh, horrible when the AI plays her. Uh, Frederick is like, it's just hard to rate these guys. Can be good, but usually a pushover. He sucks in the early game, but when he gets to the late game, he can become pretty dangerous and tech like a beast. Yeah. I think my Peter game was a good example of that. Uh, Roosevelt's pretty bad. He just doesn't do much of anything. Doesn't tech, and therefore doesn't build wonders. Very high piece weight, gets attacked. Very Doesn't build units, complete pushover. Wang is pretty bad. Augustus is okay, but not great. He can build at least. Isabella's can become pretty dangerous sometimes. Can be a witch. She can make strong religious alliances. She can build a lot of wonders. She can tech okay sometimes. She likes to do her 2500 BC oracles. The goal, not that impressive as the Naya. Also very easy to capitulate and a huge wuss. Pericles sits in a corner with five cities, tries to go for culture. Lincoln, too much of a wimp. Bismarck, he's a bit like Augustus. Churchill, oh god, Churchill's like there. Just sucks attacking. Ahsoka, uh, I don't know, a bit like Hattie and stuff, I guess. Washington. I think it's like... Isabe uh, nah, Isabella, Hattie, and Ahsoka, they're not as bad as Roosevelt and Lincoln. They build more units, they expand better, all three of them, really. They expand better, they build units. And they're probably a bit better diplomatically than, say, the American leaders. All three American leaders are just... Ugh, they're so bad when I see... It. I saw freaking Washington researching mining at, like, 1800 BC or something on one of my camps. What the friggin' hell? Stalin, I don't really know. I don't see him much. I think he's okay, though. Hammurabi. He's alright. It's hard to rate these guys, really. Monty, oh, he's... Absolutely terrible as the AI, I know that. Peter's... yeah. Something like this. It's, it's really hard. It's mainly based off experience. They might play differently with different starts. Something like this. I think Hannibal, Mansa, Justinian, Pakal, and Hyanna are the most dangerous AI, though. 
for their own reasons. The rest of them are kind of like whatever. These ones are typically can be pricks, but also can be harmless. Just depends on the situation. I don't think Elizabeth is now. She's she's too peaceful. She will just get killed and die. She's like can't be any better than Hatchie. Yeah. Hatchie at least goes religion and spreads that around, so she can make friends that way. Elizabeth, I don't know. No, it's just like yeah. Same with Gandhi. Gandhi's a better tacker than these guys, so Gandhi deserves to be up there. Elizabeth is not a good AI. Definitely overrated her. She's there at best. It's like Victoria level, maybe. Pushover. But alright. Mm, that's how it goes. So, yeah. There you go. Alright, well, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope that was somewhat interesting.